Yo. What's up, dudes? Dads, how's it going? Ooh, coffee tab. What what do we do? What do we do? Xbox is closing down studios, making weird decisions. Being we need more small games that make us money, and then closing down the very studio that made a game that made them money and it was a small game. Weird stuff's happening. PlayStation being really weird with trying to collect as much data as they can and then just go ahead and lose it probably in the next six months. The AAA industry and the console gaming industry seems to be in disarray. It's kind of bizarre. I was a console gaming enthusiast, big time. I was like, I'm gonna go into the gaming space, only talk about console gaming. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that I'm transitioning away from console gaming, but that doesn't answer the question. What are we all supposed to do as gamers? Dads. Well, I for one have been thinking a lot about the the backlog or as we call it here in this place The library the Library over backlog because we've been adding to it. And I say we because you guys have to come on Don't lie to yourself. We've all been buying more games than we needed. It's just what we do as gamers we've been adding to it over the past decade or two and I think that may maybe just maybe it's time to start going to that backlog and getting through it it's clear that this year is going to be a really really sad year in gaming um the studios that they closed if you want more information on all the different things that xbox is doing there are plenty of videos out there for you that are going to do a better job than me because at the end of the day as much as i try to stay current because hey it gets the views that's not my narrative it's not my thing my thing is talking about the practical ways that we as gaming dads can really keep the gaming going and i was thinking about it like i do this as a hobby one of my favorite hobbies um it's pretty much my only hobby now because while fitness was a huge hobby of mine that has just been kind of downgraded to habit not hobby I'm not doing it for, you know, multiple hours a day. I'm just doing it for, you know, my 60 to 90 minutes every day and then kind of get on with it. Um, but this hobby is one that I cherish. It's one that I seek out community in. And, well, you know, I put my trust in my library, trust with my library in these companies, whether it's PlayStation or Xbox, whatever it may be. I trusted that they were going to deliver a product and they're going to continue delivering that product and not until a, the steam deck entered my gaming i guess home um was i faced with the reality of what that means and what the steam deck opens up for pc gaming in general one like when i purchase a game with my on my playstation 5 i am purchasing a game saying i just want to play ratchet and clank on my playstation 5 and that is it if playstation was to sell a portable, a true portable device, and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart was available on that device, I would very much so have to purchase Rift Apart for the PSP Vita 2, whatever they want to call it. It would not be a, hey, just bring over that game unless you want to cloud stream it or unless you want to stream it through our streaming service or whatever it is. Same with if they release a PS6 or the next generation of console. They're not going to be like, hey, take this game that you have and we'll upscale you can you know we'll increase the graphics and now you can have all these great things with it no that's that's not what happens you have to end up purchasing the ps6 modification and all these different things i would have never really thought through a lot of this until the steam deck was introduced because with the steam deck what ended up happening was i don't have a playstation i mean i don't have a pc a gaming PC, I should say, because a PlayStation is just a PC, an Xbox is just a PC. They're all computers. They are boxes. They are dedicated computers to do one job and one job only, which is very convenient. I'm not dogging the console space at all. I'm not saying PC is better than console. I'm switching sides. No, I'm not going to do that kind of nonsense and clickbait that way. But what I am saying is this. What I've realized is as time has gone on, I purchased games on my Steam Deck because that's the only Steam access I have. And so that was where I did it. And then I borrowed a gaming laptop from a buddy and I'm playing those games on that gaming laptop. I'm not having to buy a different version to play a better version on my laptop. No, the laptop is running a very good version already because I have more power at my fingertips. It's playing a more optimized version, better resolution, all this kind of stuff. I can dock my 
uh, my Steam Deck, and we're good. I can play it on the Lenovo Legion Go, a completely different device, which I don't have, but if I was, I could increase different things here, have better frame rates, worse frame rates. I'm in control of my game's performance. And not until this specific introduction to me with the Steam Deck and its more consistent use in my gaming day to day, did I really realize Maybe I am being shortchanged by some of these console companies because I looked at the convenience as something that was far more valuable to me than anything else. Now, what happens with that convenience? Well, that convenience now has been transformed a little bit and what they're doing with these different companies is getting me really concerned about what is gonna happen. Oh gosh, A, B, G, so G, green is three. What is gonna happen with my libraries moving forward. As I said, I am a father. You guys know this. I am a gamer of, so I started gaming in like 95. So that is what? Well, let's say 94, that's 30 years. I'm a gamer of 30 years. I've been doing this for three decades. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Started with my boys, Mario and Luigi. I'm even back to Zelda. I'm back here doing things, not on the green side, but actually I'm back. I'm on the pink side, dude, if you guys know what that means, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, oh gosh, I'm sorry, Mario, I did not mean, I did not mean to knock you, buddy. I did not mean to knock you, there we go. Um, I wanna share this with my kids. I wanna share this excitement with my kids. I wanna be able to be like, hey, here's the game I was playing when I was holding you while you were napping on me. Do you wanna try it? You, th these kind of things. I would love to be able to share those moments with my children. And as time has gone on, I've started to realize that the best way for, one, honestly, games to be played for the longest amount of time, I would have never said this before because I didn't understand it, is on something like a portable PC. This is shown in these past few, I mean, gosh, this past couple of years, to be one of the best options for people who are serious about continuing their gaming hobby. Whether it's a dad who has very little time to dedicate to himself or a, it could be a dad, I doubt it, um, a, you know, other style of gamer that has plenty of time to sit down and play for hours on end. The, for me, Steam Deck has really enabled me to do more gaming, but also has given me the flexibility necessary as well as the delivery, the game delivery that I need for continued gameplay. And this is where it starts to get a little bit more important here in 24. We're seeing these studios close down. Well, they're not closing down on their own volition. They're closing down because these studios are run by publishers and the publishers are not making the money they thought they would make. Surprise, surprise. Xbox is shutting down studios after putting those games on Game Pass. And Game Pass is not getting any more users. Game Pass is lack of commitment. That's one. Two, you don't buy anything. And three, people are starting to utilize Game Pass in a way that isn't the original intention of Game Pass. And I'm gonna just call it now, they're gonna start introducing some really weird numbers because this is the way that people are utilizing it. See, what people are doing is they're saying, I'm just gonna sign up for the release of Indiana Jones or something, or whatever it may be. I'm gonna play Indiana Jones, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna buy it. I don't trust the publishers anymore. I don't trust that they're gonna put out a good game that's complete. I don't wanna give them my money. So instead, I'm gonna play this game and rent it for the 15 to $21, however much it is, depending on your tier level. And then I'm gonna continue on from there. We're good to go. I didn't lose any money, really, because if the game is bad, whatever, and if I really like it, I'll buy it, which data shows that they're not doing that. What does that do to the studios? They get a lump sum, but they don't get continued payment. What does that do to Xbox and Microsoft with Game Pass? Well, they're not getting the subscription like they used to because users are getting wise to it. So what ends up happening? I'm calling it now. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it will happen. We're gonna see something like one month of Game Pass, $30, or one year of Game Pass, $209. They're gonna discount the year and they're gonna increase the price of a month to deter individuals from making these style of decisions because it's going to lose them money. Sony has already done this. They said one month of PlayStation Premium is this, and then heavily discounted for a year. Nintendo, the same, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't think that Sony or Nintendo are offering 
the same type of value that Game Pass can offer with day one releases from first party publishers. That isn't happening, but still, they do this, the discounted year versus the month thing. So then what are we supposed to do as people who are trying to just enjoy this hobby and it is burning all around us? It looks like these companies are just eating themselves alive and not listening to any of the gamers. I think we turn around. I think we take a look at our libraries, right? This is more symbolic than anything else because I don't have my games on here anymore. And we go, you know what? I'm good. I got plenty of games to play. A ton. I purchased Octopath Traveler 2, never opened it. Maybe it's time we start getting back to our backlogs. Maybe it's time that we go back to some retro titles and to some of our favorite games that we played and get refreshed by it rather than looking forward to what's coming down the pike. Because I truly believe that the future of gaming right now is very much so in limbo in that we're as a industry, and I say we, but really it's community and not industry, but like we as gamers are in a transitional time. I know that I personally have felt this constraint on gaming over the past year. It's actually shake or shook the foundation of what I do in creating in this space. Cause I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to do? It doesn't look good. It's been looking bad for a while. How do I cover gaming when gaming looks like it's falling apart? Well, just recently, I mean, this year, I tried to impl I tried to start something this year and it didn't start well, but we're doing it right now. I started something called Play. Play is something that has been a part of this channel, the mug, the Play mug, right? Play is a club. It's a part, it's free. You just you gotta be in Discord, which is open to anyone who wants to be a part of Discord. We play games together. Now, back in the 90s, or the early 2000s even, I would go over to a buddy's house, we'd sit down, we'd pass the controller back and forth trying to get through whatever, first player game or whatever. Single player games were very popular. Unfortunately, couch co-op isn't as much as a of a reality uh, when you're a father and a family man because you can't just have a bunch of people over often. Can happen still, but Nintendo needs to release the next console because at the end of the day, Nintendo's the only one that does couch co-op well. But I'm like, how can we bring back that feeling? How can we play a game together? How can we get away from some of these, you know, live service games? Helldivers 2 excluded, and multiplayer games that are just milking us for money and delivering almost nothing of value, and in fact getting worse over time. How can we find the joy again? So we started something called Play, and yesterday we decided that the game we are going to play together was none other than Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask, the reason why I chose a game from this era is because if you have a Nintendo Switch, which based on stats and plenty of data online most gamers do this game is included in your nintendo switch online plus expansion pack service which again there are a lot of users that have that so we chose this and i chose it because i wanted to play through a game that i haven't actually beat before and i wanted to play something fun now we did do a poll we did this or another classic super mario world which is arguably one of the best games ever created and so we chose this. Now, you don't have to play it on this. I started playing on this, and I think personally I'm gonna play it on this. I wanna play it, the 3D version, because I like the 3D, and I like my 3DS a lot. And so I've decided to pull out the 3DS to continue playing it. The reason why I decided we need this right now is because there is a lot of Bummerness, for lack of a better term. Also, how cool is this? This is pretty sick. Now, you guys know I like manga, but I have the adaptation of Majora's Mask right here. Look, it's Majora's Mask. It's a manga about Majora's Mask. I don't know if it's any good, but I'm gonna read it. Super sweet. I decided to do this because I think that as a gaming community, we have an opportunity. We're a bunch of purpose-driven fathers. We have one purpose, to be good family men. Um, and we just need that outlet of playing games with each other, conversing about a game, getting excited about a game. And so we decided to do this. And I think that this is an exciting time to look back. We are in a really weird gaming transition. So if you're not going to look for, and you can play it emulated on your Steam Deck if you want, or on your Lenovo, whatever it may be. It's just, let's play the game 
together. And I think that right now is a good time for us to take a step back and get refreshed by it. And that's really what I'm trying to do. Let's figure out a way to be refreshed. Play right now is open to everybody. The month of May, it's Majora's Mask. I would love for you to join in. In Discord, we have a special tab for you to play. And we are trying, I like made a hard like do it, but you can do whatever you want. But we're trying to not even look up in like guides online, but instead just talk in Discord. Like, hey, what do I do here? Because that's like it used to be. I think that looking back is a good way to learn how to move forward. If you forget history, you're bound to repeat it. And there have been a lot of mistakes in the industry over the years, and I think we are repeating a lot of mistakes right now. If we were to look back on how things held together, how we, as a community, bonded over things, I think we could really do something special. We're only going to really make a big difference if we do stuff together. And so I believe right now in this time of transition for gaming, with all the craziness happening, it's our time to look back take a look at our libraries, and instead of shelling money out to these big, huge AAA studios and feeding this machine that just keeps destroying everything, we can take a step back, save a ton of money, I would argue, cancel as many, if not all of your subscription services, and start cracking away at that library, or better yet, replaying a game that brought you an immense amount of joy or that you missed out on when you were a kid. I think that's gonna be fun. Join us for Majora's Mask. I think this is gonna be great. And live streams as well. This will be played. I'm gonna to have to figure out how to overhead cam the DS we'll, we'll, or the 3DS. We'll figure it out. So that's it for me today. You know, there's a lot of news. You can go watch it if you'd like, but it's just people screaming. No need to scream. Let's focus on gaming. Sound good? All right, as always. Happy gaming.